Hello there everybody and welcome. Well, the fine weather continues and we have I believe 70 degrees here today so I'm just on the wheel here I'm making some um, smaller kitchen mixing bowls so I'm just going to continue doing that these are a pound and a quarter no forget I said that they are pound and three quarters yeah we brought the wheel out into the sun because I want to um, top up a bit on the old vitamin D you know before winter comes this will be the last last sunshine before the spring I suspect that we can get out in anyway and enjoy so yeah la 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 it's not a bad life being a potter is it really It isn't when you can be outside and pot on days like this. Na, 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 na. These are pretty much the same as GP bowls, except except they're that much bigger. A very useful addition to your range. Your range of repeat items that you make and I don't know if you can see but we put a little pouring lip on the front of it which just another little added feature which you know enables you to pour from the bowl to wherever you want it. Now one of the nice features of this kind of wheel is, you know, as, as you know, as, as when we're throwing, as we're getting bigger and wider, my speed is decreasing. But that's something that just happens automatically with this kind of wheel because you as the potter you actually become part of the wheel you are the motor so you automatically you 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 reduce your speed and you know there's like 40 50 pounds of momentum in that wheel so see that wheel is propelling itself you might think oh i'm i'm having to push it and push it the whole time i'm not you watch if I took my foot off. If I take my foot off, you see what happens. See what I mean? Just keeps on going. <laughs> so, I rolled the rim on this. Throwing stick. This is, 
It's where my hat falls off. Okay. Now these bowls are not trimmed. They don't need to be trimmed. Let's take a measurement. Well, we've got about se seven and three quarters at w wide. Seven and three quarters wide, and about three three and three-eighths high, almost three and a half high. So, oh yes, I mustn't forget to cut him off. When I'm working to a gauge like I am at the moment, I cut off with my cut-off wire away from me, not pulling towards me. That's because I've got a gauge here and the gauge gets in the way to do it the other way. And in any case, it's easier to cut away from you. You've never done it and try it. So I'm just going to momentarily spin the wheel, cut through, and that's that. The next thing we're going to do is drink tea. <laughs> Cheers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift that, now these are not thrown on a bat, but I'm going to lift that pot off the wheel, put it here, then we're going to bring the camera in and I'm going to show you how I do the little pouring lip, okay? So I get underneath it, you see, and put him here. Now because because I used my throwing stick, I cleaned off the outside of the pot so it was free from slurry. Free from wetness and slipperiness. And then I dried my hand here on my towel. Okay. That then enabled me to grip the pot. And these kind of pots that are, are like this shape like that is a good way to get underneath and to lift. Okay, as promised, let's just bring bring this camera in a bit closer. I hope we're not going to be too sunny here for the camera today. Uh, let's see, let's get the, get it around here so you can see what I'm doing. Let's just bring in the Okay, let's just bring that in like that. Hopefully that you're going to see that. So I'm just going to, what we're going to do is put a couple of fingers here like that, put this finger and now when you do this, you see if you don't put the two fingers here like this to brace the side of the bowl, if you're just going to say put your finger in here and pull it out, what it does, it just pulls the whole thing out of shape. All right, it doesn't look very nice. So what we want to try to do is maintain the round nature of the bowl, all right, and not disturb that. 
more than we have to and then just pull out of the lip between my two fingers here extend the lip out the pouring lip what are we effectively doing is the clay is is opening out in other words the platelets of clay that lie one on top of the other slide over each other you see like this so as I as I as I do it, let's do it now and I'll talk as I do. So these two fingers are going to go there like that. Okay. So now that the limitation then of the, the, the pull lip is only between these two fingers. It's, we're not stretching and pulling anything else. Okay. So that's there to brace. The wet finger goes inside and we move it left and right like this. Okay, and as I'm doing, in the process of doing that, the, the platelets of clay, just at this point here, are opening out, you see. Alright. So what I'm looking for is to keep this a circle and just have the pouring lip just extended out between those two points, just there. And there you have it. And that's basically uh, how we pull a pouring lip and you could apply the same technique to say a, a, a pitcher. Sometimes though with pitchers you want to give it a bit more of a throat. In other words this finger goes down a bit deeper inside and creates more of a, a throat from lower down there. And that's basically it. So hope that makes sense. Elementary, my dear Watson. You see? There it is. Well, I've got a couple more, a couple more balls of clay there to dispatch. going to need a fresh board so I'll stick these these guys okay these are one and three quarter pounds and I said they were the width of them was yeah seven and three quarters I don't really generally bother about the height actually that much because if you get the the width right, and then I'm looking at the propor the proportion of the bowl, and the height automatically comes the right height. But I'll give you the height. <laughs> it is. They are well, almost three and a half, but they're three. To be precise, they're three and three eighths, I suppose. Three and a half mirrors. Near as, oh yeah, another thing just to mention here, um, with these, um, anything like this where like a where you pour you pull a lip, the as it dries, um, it the the definition of the pull of the pull lip it tends to it 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 slightly loses the the nice shape that you had when you first did it. So what you want to do is initially you pull them, leave them leave them a while and as they dry but while they're still um, flexible okay you don't want to let them get too hard while they're still flexible you want to just go over them again just to sharpen up the form okay and then when you've done that then you can let them dry.
Yes, come and join us for a workshop. Um, go to our website, simonleachpottery.com. We've got there's some dates there. I don't have next year's dates actually written in yet. Got to think about next year and what's happening. At the moment, next year is pretty much vacant. <laughs> but we'll put something in there. Um, yeah, other than that, keep practicing. That's the secret. Keep practicing. Keep repeating. All right, that's that's what will turn you into a good potter. It's not just making one-off pieces. You just if you're just a one-off potter. You may be a one-off potter now, but if you are a one-off potter, I'm sure that you've you've done your training somewhere and you've learned how to repeat throw, even if you don't do it now. But if that's that's the way to become adept and fluent at making is is to repeat. I'm sure that'll rub quite a few people up the wrong way. It's not meant to, but <laughs> don't take it as an insult or take it personally. It's just a fact. Anyway, okay. See you next time. Bye-bye. La la la.